Last year, I spent $70 to buy one mint monstera in tissue culture. I transferred that plant onto fresh multiplication media, and then I continued to transfer it every six weeks or so. Within a few months, I had 14 copies of the plant that I started with. I gave one of them to Rusty Exotics, and then I gave one of them to Autumn from my UF tissue culture lab tour. So now we have 12 mint monsteras left. A modest clone army, but a clone army nonetheless. Autumn actually put hers back into tissue culture, and now she has a whole bunch of them too, so we're basically in a Mint Monstera arms race. The price has gone down for Mint Monsteras since I purchased the initial one. It looks like they sell for $50 each or so, so that leaves me with like $600 worth of plants. If you buy a plant that's already in tissue culture, it's very easy to make clones of that plant at home, and today I want to show you how. Before we get into the video, hello, my name is Lore and I make videos about cloning plants. Tissue culture works on pretty much any type of plant and it's really fun and pretty easy to do. It's the fastest way to propagate genetically identical plants. I have a website, plantsandjars.shop, where I sell all the supplies to make tissue culture media, which is the focus, the gel that the plants basically clone themselves on. Everything that I use in this tutorial will be linked below. Today I've got plants from two different sources. The first box came from a United States based tissue culture laboratory called Subculture Labs. It was my first time ordering from them and I thought it was a really good experience. I got a Monstera Lava Ghost, a Monstera White Monster, and a Monstera Burl Marks Flame. And if you're wondering why the plants that I'm showing are so expensive, they're basically like shiny Pokemon. The second box came all the way from Thailand. I ordered it from Etsy from a store called New Year Garden. Shout out to US Customs for not seizing my box. I have no idea if New Year Garden does the tissue culture themselves or if they're just purchasing plants from laboratories and reselling them. I ordered a Monstera Yellow Marilyn, two more Monstera Lava Ghosts, and two variegated Philodendron Macans. I was a little bit concerned by how these plants looked at first. Unfortunately, New Year Garden does ship in the baggies of agony and despair, which is my least favorite shipping method. If you guys want recommendations for where to purchase tissue culture plants from, I have a new TC sellers chat on my Discord server where I have some recommendations and then other people can make recommendations as well. Now that we have our plants, we're ready to prepare some multiplication media so that we can start cloning them. The ingredients that you use in the tissue culture media depend on what type of plant you're trying to clone. Since most of the plants that we're working with today are monsteras, I'll demonstrate how to make monstera multiplication media. If you're interested in the media that I use for philodendrons, every order from my website plantsandjars.shop includes access to all of the plant-specific protocols that I use. Protocols are basically step-by-step -step instructions for cloning plants. Every plant is a little bit different, so each protocol is also a little bit different. Protocols usually look like this, they're very science heavy, but I've reformatted them into cookbook style recipes that you do not need a high level science degree to interpret. No need to calculate molarity, unless you're into that, in which case, nerd. The starter kit is what I use to clone the rare and tropical plants that you see me working with. Everything else that I use in this tutorial, like containers and equipment that I don't sell on my website, will be linked below on Amazon to make getting started as easy as possible. Okay, back to the media. <laughs> to make one liter of Monstera multiplication media, we're going to start with 800 milliliters of distilled water. First, I'm going to add 4.43 grams of Murashigi and Scooge. MS is our basal medium, and it includes all the nutrients that plants in vitro need to survive. The next thing I'm going to add is 30 grams of sugar. We established in my last video that plants in TC don't photosynthesize like a mature plant does, so the sugar is an energy source for the plants to grow. The next thing we need to add is our hormones. So these hormones control how the plants grow while they're in tissue culture. And the hormone combination that we're going to be using today will contain BAP and NAA. Using a pipette, I add five milliliters of the BAP solution, one milliliter at a time, because I only had the small pipette at home. They sell bigger pipettes, just so everyone is aware. After that, I add 0.1 milliliters of NAA, 
following the instructions outlined in the protocol. The solutions are a concentration of one milligram per milliliter. So if you see we need five milligrams of BAP, you know to just use five milliliters of the solution. The last ingredient we're going to add is six grams of agar. After all of the ingredients are added, we're going to top off our water to that one liter mark. pH is really important. It controls how the plants are able to absorb nutrients. So using a pH probe and pH up and down, I adjust the pH to 5.7. After that, the media is poured into polypropylene deli containers and pressure cooked at 15 PSI for 15 to 20 minutes to make sure that it's completely sterile and ready for the plants. These small containers that you see in the video are from Carrot. They are from a restaurant supply company and they are excellent in the pressure cooker. They're sold in like packs of 2000, but you'll be surprised how fast you get through it. I do not recommend using larger deli containers like these at home. Um, in a pressure cooker, these basically just like crumple up and get completely deformed and are totally useless. You'll also need to pressure cook a pair of forceps or a couple pairs of forceps by wrapping them in aluminum foil or in autoclave bags. And those can get cooked at 15 PSI for 15 minutes as well. So at this point, the media is prepared and we're ready to transfer the plants. For the plants from Subculture Labs, which are in the glass vials, I'll be transferring them inside the still air box. The plants that are in the baggies of agony and despair are much more difficult to work with, so I'm going to work with those underneath the laminar flow hood. I start by spraying down the still air box with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Inside of the box, I have the tissue culture media that was sterilized, a sterile pair of forceps, the tissue culture plants that we're going to transfer, a glass bead sterilizer for the forceps, and a pair of gloves. What we're doing here is very simple. We are literally just taking the plants out of the glass vials that they came in and placing them into the new media. It's kind of like musical chairs in a way, but if nobody had legs. I'm going to give you four tips for doing this so you don't contaminate everything. Tip number one, move slowly and deliberately. Quick movements disturb the air and defeat the purpose of the still air box. Tip number two, if you have to put the forceps down, put them into the glass bead sterilizer. Don't put them down on the surface of the still air box. Even though we sprayed it down with alcohol, it's not technically sterile, so you risk contaminating your plants. Um, number three, don't reuse anything that's touched an unsterile surface. If you put the forceps down, like I just mentioned, don't keep using them. That's why I'd recommend sterilizing multiple sets of forceps beforehand, not just one. I'm actually using three different sets of forceps here, one for each of the plants to even increase my chances of not contaminating the plants. That was a very confusing double negative. Number four is don't leave the containers open or with their lids off. The less time the containers are exposed, the lower the risk of airborne contamination. And that is it. We have successfully transferred our three monsteras and now they can begin to multiply. If you're using a laminar flow hood instead of a still air box, the process is very similar. Whenever I get plants sent to me in baggies, I use the flow hood to do the transfer because I just find the baggies much more difficult to work with due to their flimsy nature. This is a message for the people of Thailand and the people of Thailand only. People of Thailand, I am once again asking you to stop shipping plants in bags. It is not a good shipping method. Please use sterile centrifuge tubes instead. I don't care if it is more expensive. I will pay more. Thank you for your time and cooperation. First, I start by spraying down the bags with isopropyl alcohol, 70%, and I leave them sitting just completely soaked in alcohol for like 20 minutes. The flow hood blows air through a HEPA filter onto your work, so it keeps everything very clean and sterile. I have a whole video about where to get scientific equipment very cheaply and on the DL. Check out that video if you're curious about getting yourself a flow hood. Working in the hood allows me to be a little bit more hands-on with the plants. They can be out for much longer than they could be in the still air box. So I do things like removing the roots and also removing any dead leaves or dead tissue from the plants before they get established in the fresh multiplication media that I showed you how to prepare earlier. That's great, right? No, it's not great. This plant is covered in tissue culture media from being in the bag for so long. 
that won't do. I decided that I need to rinse the plants off with sterile water before I could put them into the fresh tissue culture media. I thought that having the old media just coated all over the plants would not be good for their growth. I had autoclave some water earlier that day since I was planning to establish my begonia pink urchin in tissue culture after I finished filming this video. The problem was that the water was still really hot, so I put it in the fridge to cool down faster, and then when that wasn't working fast enough, I put it in the freezer. I also needed sterile containers to hold the water, so I grabbed some sterile Naglene bottles that another company had given me out of pity back when I still worked in a storage closet. I removed the Monstera white lava from the container and rinsed it in sterile water to get all the media off, and then I re-established it right back into the same media container. This method worked pretty well for removing the tissue culture media. I actually had never had to do this before, so I repeated it for the other plants as well. To prevent contamination, I reset all of the tools between the individual cultures. It might be overkill, but I don't trust anyone except myself, even my past self. The variegated macans were the sketchiest looking of all, but they ended up cleaning up pretty nice. I ordered two plants, but I ended up with three. That's plant arbitrage. Here's everything on the shelf, both the plants we did in the still air box and the ones we did in the flow hood, all living in perfect equality. It's been probably a week and a half to two weeks since I did those initial transfers and nothing is contaminated from either of the transfers. So that's it. You need to keep subculturing every four to six weeks, which is exactly what we did today, moving the plants from one container to a new container. The rest of the steps for growing the plants are all laid out very detailed in the protocols. I would really love to see more domestic tissue culture laboratories in the United States. The space has grown a lot since I started making these videos, but there's still a lot of room. So please start selling tissue culture plants. I will buy them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Also remember to like and subscribe.